I have uh, had with women who work for me on this show. Former CBS News producer Joe Halderman was in court pleading guilty to attempted second degree grand larceny. I apologize to Mr. Letterman, his family, to Stephanie Burkett, her family, and certainly to my friends and family. Once upon a time, David Letterman came face to face with karma. After cheating on his wife and taking advantage of his female employees, he found himself victim to a massive case of extortion. And even though David was wronged here, he still used his position of power to cross boundaries with female employees. So let's get into it. Nowadays, it seems like every television show host has a dark past, and David Letterman is one of them, because at one point, he was cheating on his partner with a staffer who also was in a relationship, and ultimately, it led him into this extortion plot. I mean, not only is this problematic because this is her boss and they have this workplace power dynamic, but it's also screwed up because David found himself on the other end and being extorted for a lot of money over this evidence. So let me give you guys some context and how this situation went from an intern to the police to a public scandal. Now, this woman, Stephanie Burkett, a quote, sweet and witty blonde, end quote, from New Hampshire, begins an internship at the Late Show back in 1996. In the year 2000, there's a skit on the show and David Letterman calls one of his production offices and she actually answers the phone and they two banter on television, which caught the attention of his viewers and people actually enjoyed it. So she ended up going on to his show over and over again as one of these employees and someone he would catch up with. She actually appeared on his show 260 times. Nice to see. Is it cold there? It is so unbelievably frigid. Yeah. <laughs> but how, how cold is it there? Give me a degree. Well, you know, I was watching TV and they said it was supposed to be 40. Yeah. But I think it's about eight. <laughs> But in 2004, Stephanie begins a relationship with a man named Robert, who's a veteran at CBS News. He's a producer who's known for working in dangerous war zones and collaborating with correspondents such as Dan Rather and Bob Simon. The relationship moves pretty quickly because Stephanie moves in with Robert, and then the following year, she is to work the Olympic Games in Italy, and that's when her romantic relationship with David Letterman began. Keep in mind, he was in a steady relationship with a woman named Regina, who he had been dating for about three years. Well, David Letterman continued to sleep with his employee, and Stephanie would write about this in her diary, which, if you're gonna go and cheat, I feel like the number one, well, don't go and cheat on anyone, but the number one thing you do is you don't leave any evidence behind. Well, in December 2008, Robert found Stephanie's diary, in which she detailed late nights with David Letterman, and romantic trips to Montana and St. Bart's, he actually confronted her and she swears she'll end the relationship. Only a few months after that, David Letterman marries Regina in a quiet ceremony near his Montana ranch. But Robert, Stephanie's man, still isn't convinced that she's being honest, so Robert spies on David and Stephanie in a passionate embrace outside of his home. He decides to write a screenplay about the environment of workplace sexual conduct at The Late Show. Stephanie moves out of the house shortly after this, though it's reported that she was unaware that her man Robert was writing this screenplay about David Letterman hooking up with his employees. I know this story sounds crazy, but it gets crazier. In September 2009, Robert is all done with his play, so he passes it off to David Letterman, and of course, David is like taken back because his like affair and his life is being written about in this script. It turns out that Robert left this screenplay on his back seat of his car detailing various affairs he's had with interns. About a week after that, David meets with Robert at a hotel in Manhattan and the CBS producer, Robert, told <laughs> David that he would sell his screenplay to him for $2 million in exchange for 
his silence. So essentially, Robert will be quiet about him sleeping around if he pays him two million. Then they met again on September 23rd and 30th. So they were negotiating. I'm sure David Letterman had the two million dollars to pay this man off, but he didn't want to pay it. And I'm sure his wife would have noticed if two million dollars went away. So right after Robert threatened David, he actually reached out to the New York County District Attorney to report that he's being blackmailed. On September 30th, 2009, David met with Robert, and at this point, David Letterman had a microphone on recording this interaction where David's asking for the screenplay and passing along a phony check for $2 million, essentially gathering the evidence on Robert to show that, yeah, in fact, he is blackmailing him. On October 1st, Robert attempts to redeem the check and is arrested shortly afterward. David Letterman announces on his show that he was subject to an extortion attempt and tells his live audience about the terrible, terrible things that he has done. I have had intimate relationships with women who work with me on this show. And honestly, kudos to David for being straight up and honest about what had happened and admitting this to his audience. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you folks are uh, here tonight and I'm glad you're in such a pleasant mood because uh, I have a little story that I would like to tell you and uh, the home viewers as well. Do you feel like a story? Yeah. 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 This, uh, this started uh, three weeks ago uh, yesterday, and uh, I got up, uh, I get up early and I come to work early, and I go out and I get into my car, and in the, the back seat of my car is a, a package I, I don't recognize and have never seen before and, and don't usually receive packages six in the morning in the back of my car. So David goes on to explain his morning and the fact that he had this random package in his car, which I guess like maybe he didn't lock his car. I don't understand how Robert would have gotten it in there, but that is pretty scary. I mean, I would be worried that there's something you know terrible in there. This morning I did something I've never done in my life and, and it was a, a, a combination of just unusual and, and, and scary. The whole, this whole thing has been quite scary. Uh, I had to go downtown to the uh, testify before the grand jury, yeah. and uh, I had to tell them how I, I was disturbed by this. I was worried for myself. I was worried for my family. Uh, I, f I felt menaced by this, uh, and I had to tell them uh, all of the creepy things that I have done that were going to be. <laughs> well, now why is that funny? That's I mean. <laughs> So with this package came a letter and it wrote, I know that you do some terrible, terrible things and I can prove that you do these terrible things. And sure enough, what was contained in the package was proof that he does terrible, terrible things, which his crowd finds funny because he is a lighthearted person, but it is really serious. So I kind of wish he like would have like set the tone, but this was probably the best way for him reputation wise to navigate this entire situation. So of course, everyone in the audience just assumes that this is some kind of big that he's doing. So uh, I get to, to looking uh, through it, and uh, there's a, a letter uh, in the package, and it's, uh, it says that, uh, uh, I know that you do some terrible, terrible things, <laughs> and I can prove that you do these terrible things. And sure enough, contained in the package was stuff to prove that I do terrible things. This report writes, the audience, most likely waiting for the punchline that never came, laughed nervously as he went on to describe how he and his attorney then set up a meeting with his blackmailer. And it's interesting that Robert presented this evidence in a screenplay. I mean, maybe that's his way of trying to sell it without it being extortion, but it is still extortion, though I still don't understand why Robert just didn't provide all of the proof, opposed to writing some script detailing it all. I get to the office and I say to myself, uh, I hate doing things like this, but maybe I'll call my attorney. So I call my attorney uh, and uh, he takes a look at it and he says, well, let's, let's schedule a meeting with the guy just to see what he has in mind. So there, there's a meeting with the guy and uh, it turns out, yes, in fact, he wants a, a large sum of money or he's going to produce this uh, screenplay of all the terrible things that I do. Now, Robert didn't just have this play. He also had other intentions. He must have been really hurt by David stealing Stephanie away for a little bit because he planned to write a book about David Letterman's life, revealing details of his past sexual infidelities. Now, at some point, he does admit to his audience that, yes, he had been hooking up with an employee, which is just terrible. I mean, 
that's like a network's like nightmare to have their star hooking up with like some random employees because it just speaks to how unprofessional everyone is. Oh, so now this guy is uh, walking around New York City with a, a, a phony check for two million dollars, and and the the idea is now. Uh, although he's given no guarantees, he's still saying, well, you, you know, you never know. I may just go ahead and write the books, may just still go ahead and write the screenplay. So for uh, that uh, guarantee, he's got a phony check for $2 million. Honestly, making light of this situation probably saved him a lot of backlash because I can't imagine someone laughing this off nowadays. Uh, the creepy stuff was that I have uh, had sex with women who work for me on this show. Now... My response to that is, yes, I have. <laughs> I have had sex with women who work on this show. CBS put out a statement writing, Mr. Letterman addressed the issues during the show's broadcast last night, and we believe his comments speak for themselves. So they were completely backing him. But when you're a big star, you are a target. But I think one of the reasons why David is able to get away with some of this is because what Robert did was so bad that it makes like David seemed like almost like a victim here. But I do want to acknowledge that David at one point went through something super scary because in 2005, a man named Kelly Frank, who worked as a handyman on his Rocky Mountain Ranch in Montana, was arrested for allegedly plotting to kidnap David Letterman's then 16 month old son, Harry. And actually Kelly Frank pleaded not guilty, but got 10 years in jail for overcharging David Letterman. So now for plotting to take this child and steal them, but for overcharging on their work. But let's get back to Robert because he has to now serve some time because, you know, David Letterman was smart. He got the police involved and he caught this guy in the act. So on October 2nd, 2009, Robert pleads not guilty and is bailed out on a $200,000 bond posted by two of his colleagues. His lawyer says the story is far more complicated than it appears. Now, I guess Robert did apologize to David Letterman and his family at some point, including their young son, Harry. He also apologized to Stephanie for involving her in this situation as well. He ended up accepting a plea deal that included a six month jail sentence, probation, and a thousand hours of community service to avoid going to trial, which if it went to trial, that would have been really embarrassing for him. Former CBS News producer Joe Holderman was in court pleading guilty to attempted second degree grand larceny a deal that included a public apology. I apologize to Mr. Letterman, his family, to Stephanie Burkett, her family, and certainly to my friends and family. You know, if he's taking a plea deal, he's pretty much admitting to what he had did. And this is some really psycho behavior for a grown man. He must have really been motivated, I guess, by that money or just like super hurt over Stephanie leaving him. The plea ended a sensational six month saga that began last September when Holderman at six in the morning arranged to leave what he called a screenplay treatment along with photos and a diary in the back seat of Letterman's car that threatened to expose numerous affairs Letterman had conducted with staffers. When you see these clips and know that Robert accepted a plea deal, it is pretty hard not to feel bad for David in this situation. I mean, he shouldn't have been hooking up with his employees. That's disgusting. But also at the same time, this Robert guy is clearly sick for like a 50 year old man who, you know, has a life, has a family. Why is he so invested on trying to destroy David Letterman? Unless they have some other beef because of CBS and some long running feud, but it doesn't appear that way. Holderman, now 52, was arrested and charged with a crime that could have put him behind bars for 15 years. In the end, that was negotiated down to six months, which could become four with credit for good behavior, plus five years probation and a thousand hours of community service. CBS probably loved that this situation happened because honestly, it brought David Letterman a ton of views. Shortly after this situation went down, The Late Show pulled in 5.7 million viewers, a 19% ratings boost, and far more than his Tonight Show rival, Conan O'Brien. But because he's getting all of this newfound attention, he's also getting some bad attention. And the New York Post did a piece about Stephanie and her being the woman that like essentially caused, uh, she didn't cause it, but you know, she's a big part of this entire extortion situation. Last week uh, on the, the show, I told a little story about being blackmailed. And uh, I, I, wa I wasn't gonna talk about it anymore, but uh, it seems like people wanna talk about it. Ah. <laughs> 
Um, and, 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 and when you're a, a, a black belt, it's, it's a crime and you're a victim. It's, a, it's felony extortion is what it is, and it's, it, it's a nasty thing to, to do to people. Now, being a victim, and if you happen to your behavior... So Robert is arrested, he is charged, but he's not done yet. Robert attempts to have the charges dropped, claiming that he had the right to write this screenplay about a public figure, but his plea is dismissed because the point is that he tried to make him pay for that script. By March, Robert is pleading guilty to grand larceny and is sentenced to six months in prison. So uh, yeah, his attempts to try to get it dropped didn't really work, and I'm sure the audio recording recording didn't help, which is probably why he didn't want to go to trial because they would have played the tape of him accepting that check. Um, just gonna hold it. Maybe you guys are watching this video and you're thinking to yourselves that Robert is the bad guy here, but David has had his moments. Not saying he's a totally bad and awful, terrible person, but at one point he did have to issue an apology to some staffers because he was discriminating against women. On top of mistreating female guests and partaking in authority abusing affairs in the workplace, David Letterman was also reportedly not too kind to his female staffers. In 2009, around the time that he revealed on air that he had been cheating on his wife with some women that were working for him, there was an essay published by Vanity Fair where this person, Nell, revealed that David Letterman exercised sexual favoritism in the workplace, denying women staff promotion in fostering a toxic male-dominated workplace. It took a full decade for David Letterman to read the essay, but she spoke with him face-to-face -to, -face to gauge his reaction to her allegations. Quote, when I read that document you wrote 10 years ago, he said, I just thought there's nothing to be upset about here. It happened and it's all true. So he did actually take some ownership to it, but uh, it took him 10 years to actually respond to Vanity Fair. He stated, I'm sorry that I was that way, and I was happy to read the piece because it wasn't angering. I felt horrible because who wants to be that guy that makes people unhappy to work where they're working? I don't want to be that guy. I'm not that guy now. I was that guy then. So it's nice that he is taking actual ownership, but I'm sure age probably helps him, you know, like take a look back and in hindsight he can see what they're talking about. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below who you'd like for me to talk about next and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye guys.